He was the first great poet laureate of rock and roll. Well, anybody that plays guitar should know about Chuck Berry. You know. It's this kind of chugging, kind of railroad motion that he has going for him. <laughs> My day is the king of rock and roll. Deep down in Louisiana, close to New Orleans, where back up in the woods among the evergreens, there's got a long cabin made of earth and wood, where lived a country boy named Johnny B. Good, who never ever learned to read or write well. He could play a guitar like a ring and a bell. Go, 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 Johnny, go, go. That's why I go for that rock and roll. Before there were the Beatles and the Stones, yes, even before Elvis himself, there was Chuck Berry. He made it all look so easy. It's gotta be rock and roll music if you wanna dance with me. If you wanna dance with me. I, yeah, I record from feeling. Sometimes after I record, I'm in a different feeling when the record comes out. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm recording uh, from uh, uh, like uh, it's a job. It's a it's a it's a real shore to record, and by the time it comes out, I'm really digging it, you know. Yeah, I was living in St. Louis in the year of 1955. St. Louis, Missouri is the birthplace of the man seen by many as the creator of rock and roll, as well as its original outlaw. been the best part of 30 years since Chuck Berry's last album was released. You could be forgiven for thinking he'd gone to that great auditorium in the sky, but he's still playing out at almost 80, still living in his hometown. I went back home and wrote a song. I mean, he could easily have a limousine, he could have anyone drive him, but uh, he, he likes doing it himself, he likes doing everything. He does, he cuts his own grass. So you have a guy that's on his tractor, cutting his grass. I mean, he gets a great deal of relaxation, a lot of pleasure out of just taking it easy. Taking Does he care cut of the, the land. grass well? As a matter oh, of yeah. interest. Oh, you yeah. 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 He doesn't kind of freestyle it and drive oh, no, 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 the tractor no, 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 Sometimes he does like crop circle things. <laughs> yeah, he just yeah. yeah, yeah, he does, he does. Just to freak you all uh, out. Right. Uh, no, I think it's beautiful. yourself to St. Louis, said the boss, and find Chuck Berry. What could possibly go wrong? He likes a ball game, does Chuck, so I thought I might come across him rooting for the St. Louis Cardinals. Chuck Berry was a bit of a devil in his pomp, right enough, with some jail time on his resume. But I couldn't see an old coot pushing 80, giving Newsnight the runaround. Well, in the morning, I'm giving you my morning, don't you step on my blue suede shoe. Hey. My father wrote a book 20 years ago, yeah. and I feel that I think he thinks that's the interview that any, if anybody wants an interview, they can refer to his book. Now, we tracked down Chuck's grown-up children, Chuck Berry Jr. and his sister Ingrid. They now play in Daddy's backing band. So I guess I was in like second grade, and you know all the kids say, "Well, my dad's a policeman, my dad's a you know a, a fireman, my dad's a doctor." So we're doing this, you know, and I said, "Well, my dad's a king of rock and roll." They're you know, like. That trumps it, doesn't it? Really? Well, I got beat up that day. <laughs> Chuck's children didn't rate our chances of finding their dad, but we went looking for him in his old haunts all the same. Fortunately, he'd composed some appropriate music for this. My baby beside me at the wheel. Chuck Berry was raised in the Ville, still one of the poorer neighborhoods of St. Louis. He grew up here on Good Street, which lent its name to his hit Johnny Be Good, 
but don't look for it now. The road's been renamed. This was his church. This is high school. And good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeffrey Halasgo, Dr. Jeff. Welcome to another thrilling edition of The Big Bang for this week. I had an appointment with Dr. Jeff, not only the premier oldies DJ in St. Louis, but a practicing ER medic. He's the safest pair of hands in show business. Uh, especially from their program, Newsnight, which is, I believe, a nightly news and entertainment program. And here from the BBC is Mr. Stephen Smith. Good afternoon, uh, Stephen, and welcome to St. Louis, and welcome to KDHX. Dr. Jeff, it's a great pleasure. And can I just say, for the benefit, of you and your listeners that Newsnight is a bit like your own show, Big Bang. It's all fun all the time. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say, look, Chuck, if you're listening, I'm in the book. Actually, I'm not in the book. But, you know, if he contacts this station, I'm sure you'll pass his message along to us and we can do the rest. We thank you for listening and uh, send our best regards to everybody over there. We'll do that. And yeah. Dr. Jeff. Yes, sir. One other thing. Yes, sir. Let's rock. We shall do that. Whoops. That Stay slipper. steady. Yep. I like for the mood to be free and open and let's jam. Let's boogie, in other words. You know. I left my home in North Virginia, California on my mind. This is Berry Park outside St. Louis. These days it's a kind of compound for Chuck Berry and his immediate circle. But when it was opened back in the 50s, it was intended to be an answer to the kind of whites-only country clubs that people like the Berries had been excluded from in the days of segregation. Alas, the dream of Berry Park didn't endure. The stylish amenity of a guitar-shaped swimming pool has, we understand, been filled in. So too, on this elegant boulder at the front gates, the sign saying, welcome to Berry Park. Just as we were giving up hope of ever finding the reclusive rock and roller, word reached us that he was playing a gig right here in St. Louis. You're an experienced documentary maker. How do you fancy my chances of an interview with Chuck Berry? You know, ignorance and perseverance go a long way in documentary filmmaking, and if you're not smart enough to quit, uh, there's a, you know, you've got a good chance, and you're here, and you're nearby, and uh, I'd say your chances are pretty good tonight. I feel good about you. For the benefit of British audiences who may have forgotten, what is the duck walk? Oh, that the way he sort of squats and slides along. <laughs> that was pretty good. That's not bad. I didn't spill anything. Pretty useful. <laughs> yes. Fans were warming up for the night with a screening of a documentary about Chuck Berry. Uh, if there's anything I can do to make uh, your evening better, let me know. Including be a famous stand-up row with Keith Richards of the Stones over how to set an amplifier. You understand? I understand. Okay. I understand. Well, I was talking to anybody. Right. But you got to live with it afterwards. That's what I'm I've been living for 60 years with I it. I know that. Okay, well I then realize that. it. But is it going to be here after all dead and gone? Right, it ain't you and me and no, it's well, everybody. Well, I ain't dying. At last, we were face to face with the old boy himself. Won't be filmed, but can't resist a fan with a camera. The cock and it was almost one. I said, "Come on, baby, let's have us some fun." And we read. So, did he play all those evergreen hits? Of course he did. Does he still play the guitar like nobody else? Certainly. It's true that, like most 79-year-olds, there were moments when he struggled to find the right word. But when you bear in mind that he wrote those words, I think you've got to give him some slack. Does Chuck Berry still have it? Yes, I think he does. I so long, sweetheart. Au revoir. Adios. Arrivederci, brother. Hey. 